Peter, and I'm another developer advocate at Samsung Internet. There's a few of us around today. And this talk is about web Bluetooth and how you can use it for things that might be fun and things that might even be good business sense and make profit too. Most of us will be familiar with Bluetooth from devices that we use every day, like our smartphones, our Bluetooth speakers, and our smartwatches. And some of you may have also seen that Bluetooth was in the news just this week because a bunch of Bluetooth treasure from the 10th century has been uncovered. But it turns out that this is not because Bluetooth technology was available back in the 10th century, um, but because Bluetooth is named after Harald Bluetooth, the Danish king who united Denmark and Norway. And fun fact is that the runes, the Danish, sorry, the Norse runes for his initials H and B make up that Bluetooth logo that we are familiar with. So it's not quite as old as the 10th century, but it is quite old for a technology standard. Um, if we take its birth date as being when the Bluetooth Special Interest Group formed, then it is 20 years old this year. And since then, we've had some new innovations around Bluetooth as well. In 2010, we had the Bluetooth Low Energy Standard established as part of the Bluetooth 4 spec. And this let Bluetooth work very efficiently for low-powered devices, small devices, things that can be powered just by small batteries. More recently, then, we had Bluetooth 5 introduced. Um, in fact, the first phone to introduce it was the Galaxy S8. And this promises quadruple the range and double the speed. We also now have Bluetooth Mesh, a new standard that's new, and it lets Bluetooth endpoints form networks among themselves. So instead of having to have a central hub act as the communication point for everything, you can have a mesh of Bluetooth devices that can all communicate with each other. And this is neat because it can help us overcome that relatively limited range of Bluetooth. So this has people excited for the potential for things like building automation, smart lighting, and beacons, and IoT. So although we may think of it as just being for consumer technologies, there are things that we can find Bluetooth being very useful for in things like wayfinding and smart buildings and smart industry. In fact, we're seeing this rise of smart devices everywhere. Like, I had a quick check on Kickstarter yesterday, and I found uh, smart garden irrigation, smart cat feeders, and one that my wife actually might be keen for me to check out, a smart snoring solution. And in fact, we have 10 million Bluetooth-enabled devices shipping every day. So this is a big, big opportunity. If we can communicate with these devices, then that can be very powerful for our applications. And native apps, all the big native platforms, have had this capability for a long time. But what about the web? Well, the web, as we know, uh, is arguably the most important of all platforms, and we certainly believe that at Samsung Internet. And something that Martin Woolley from the Bluetooth Special Interest Group has pointed out that in the world of enterprise applications, the web browser is super important as well. And the web has this great advantage that everything is just a tap away. We don't have to send someone off to the store to download something before they can use it. They can just tap on a URL, open up the website, and away they go. And we can make that even more friction-free by broadcasting a URL to them using Bluetooth. There's a standard called physical web that is about broadcasting a URL in a certain format. And physical web clients, such as our Samsung close by that we have in the browser, can detect this and automatically surface up these websites when you're in the right location, if you have this switched on. That means that we can then just tap on that silent notification and get taken to that web page straight away. And you could imagine, in this case, 
Uh, this is one for the conference here, so it could take us to the conference schedule, which would be handy. But if we're thinking about Bluetooth and controlling Bluetooth devices, this could take me to a website that could then be the controller for that Bluetooth device as well. Which brings us on to Web Bluetooth, a web standard for integrating with Bluetooth devices and potentially controlling them. And it's a way that we can do this without any native apps or SDKs. We were pleased recently to announce the support for Web Bluetooth in Samsung Internet. And it's also available in Chrome and Opera with support on Android, Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS. And if you're looking for support on Windows, there's a Windows 10 Web Bluetooth Polyfill Chrome extension that's available that you could use to try it there as well. So let's see some examples of Web Bluetooth and what we can use it for. Here's one that I made earlier for controlling slides for a presentation, which I could have used today if I had forgotten my clicker. Um, but on a mobile phone here in a mobile website, I connect then to my laptop, and then I can use it to control the slides. So it's connecting one web application to another web application. We also like to play with various little Bluetooth gadgets. And this one is called a PuckJS um, from Esprino. And this has various things in it, like you can use it as a button, it has lights in there, it has sensors, and you can control it purely just via a web application. And via this web application, you can program it using JavaScript. And then you can send that code over to it, over web Bluetooth, and then the PuckJS is actually running my little script there, which is, in this case, just telling it to switch the light on or off. But we could do more interesting things than that, too. Another one is the Nordic Thingy 52, which is neat, especially because it's got, well, a whole bunch of sensors in it. It's got an accelerometer and a gyroscope and a compass. And again, this is just a web application there that is tracking its movements and displaying that in the web page. And our friend Luke made a cool web Bluetooth demo that connects with a grid of LEDs. And he can use this to draw using lights. Again, just via a web page. This one, I'm not quite sure I should be showing an example of someone reverse engineering one of our Samsung products, but I think it's cool. Um, so this is. Uh, what someone had managed to do with our Gear VR controller. Uh, and they have, again, integrated this with Web Bluetooth so that they're able to have a web, web application, just a web page, that then shows the orientation and shows the clicks or the touches that you have on the controller. So you can use this for games or controlling other things on websites. And another one that is pretty cool with Web Bluetooth is this one for controlling race cars. And I think I'm going to have to have a, a word with uh, Daniel and ask if we can get one of these for the office for research purposes. Um, because, yeah, we need, to, we need to make sure this is well tested in our, in our browser. And our colleague Joe, who uh, was speaking just in the previous session at the, the other track, um, used a, a virtual reality controller as well, the Daydream controller, to use as a, a controller for curling, curling a hedgehog, as, as you will want to do frequently. Um, and in this case, it's just running in a mobile web browser in Samsung Internet, but it also works in the Gear VR um, and other VR devices because it's a web VR demo as well. 
then our friends Yuri and Alex also used web Bluetooth to visualize their brainwave data. This was using the Muse EEG headset, um, and that picks up the different brainwaves of different frequencies and can display it on your web page over Bluetooth. But I should, at this point, just point out that there is this difference in Bluetooth between what's the central device and the peripheral device. So the central one is the one that's establishing the connection and generally in control. And the peripheral is the thing such as our smartwatch or some kind of device that we want, that we want to uh, connect with and control. So in the web Bluetooth world, web Bluetooth is giving us the ability to program the central device. So in that example of controlling slides that I shared earlier, the web Bluetooth web application was running on the mobile phone. That was the central. That was the one where I tapped the button and, and had the pairing prompt, which then showed me my laptop, because my laptop I had turned into a Bluetooth peripheral by using a node module called Bleno, which is short for Bluetooth Low Energy Node. And that node server then streamed the data to the website running on my laptop via WebSockets. So let's dive in a bit to how we use Web Bluetooth. Firstly, on the peripheral side, it's made up, the structure is made up of something called GAT or generic attributes. So when we are controlling, when we are communicating with a peripheral device, this is what we're going to deal with. We have characteristics, which are essentially data buckets. They're things that we can read from or write to. Um, so, we, for example, there might be a characteristic for a heart rate, if we're thinking about a heart rate monitor, or uh, the sensor location. And these characteristics are grouped up by services. So, for example, we might have a heart rate service or a thermometer service. And these services, again, can also then be grouped by an overall profile, um, such as a health device profile. And these profiles, some of these profiles are standards, and we can grab them off the shelf and use them in our hardware. Um, or we can define our own custom profile for our own custom hardware as well. And those characteristic properties, those characteristic data buckets have properties that define what we can do with them. So in this case, there's one that we can read from and we can write to. And we can also do things like um, ask it to notify us back when we have some new data to share back with us. So an application, a Bluetooth application that talks with a smartwatch might do something like this. It's sending write data, it's reading data back from it, and it registers for notifications so it can get notifications back when it, certain events happen, for example. So let's have a quick look at the code, the JavaScript code that we use to use the Web Bluetooth API in our website. So the first thing we will do is call request device. And we pass in some filters to say these are the kind of Bluetooth devices that we're interested in that we want to find to, for, to be able to pair with. And we would also pass in the universally unique identifiers for any services that we wish to access on that device. So in this case, I'm looking for the name of a drone. I'm looking for a drone to pair with. So I'm passing in a name prefix because I know that this drone happens to be called a Travis. Um, so its Bluetooth name will start with that prefix. And when we call that request device function, this is when the user has this pairing prompt come up. So at this point, it scans for devices around. And when it finds one that fulfills those filters, then it brings it up in the list there as being available to pair with. Once the user has tapped, yeah, I want to pair with that, that device, then we get a reference to the device. And we can call GAT connect on it to connect to that GAT server. And from that server, we can then pull out the services by their UUID and their characteristics. 
And once we have a characteristic, then we can do things like read from it, and we can read out a value and get that back and use it for our application. So here it looks slightly strange with this resolution, but hopefully it will still work. An attempt at a live demo, because no web Bluetooth talk would be complete without one, surely. Um, so this is taking that, that basic code that I shared there and just taking it further to filling out all the communication required to write commands to the drone and to get it back. Um, so now if I call connect, we get that little pairing prompt that I described, and it's coming up with our Travis drone here. So if I click pair with that, it will say connecting. Now it's connected. I should be able to click take off. <laughs> and then uh, I'll risk going forwards a little bit maybe. Because no one's in the front way. Whoa, whoa. Okay, back. And then I'll, I'll just uh, make it flip, I think. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to say that's, that's uh, pushing my luck enough for now, so I'll land it. <laughs> uh, that was in case the demo failed. <laughs> The full code for that example is up on GitHub if you wanted to take a look and we'll fork it or do something else with it. Um, it may not be the best example to try for a starting point if you wanted to write your very first web Bluetooth application because it's a little bit complicated, the communication with the drone. But if you are new to Web Bluetooth, and especially if you're new to JavaScript promises, which you use to access the API, then I do recommend this article from our colleague Joe again, um, Promises, Promises, which is up on our Medium blog. Um, so this introduces JavaScript promises and how they're used for Web Bluetooth. So whether you use Web Bluetooth for fun things like the drone, or whether you have had some ideas sparked for using this for enterprise IoT or some other consumer technology, then I hope this has given you some ideas for things to create. Thank you very much. These slides are up at that URL. I'm on social media where you can find me. And thank you very much for listening.